All right, guys, can everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up? Good? All right, let's kick it off, guys. So today we're going to be talking about working with sellers. And this is really going to be um, an introductory kind of class and overview, but it's a great place to get started if you are trying to work with more sellers, if you're starting to talk to people who want to sell, especially as springtime and summertime comes up, that's when you get the most people wanting to put their homes on the market. So knowing the basics of what to say, how to say it, what questions to ask, and then understanding kind of an overview of the process is really going to allow you to have some of those conversations with people so that you can start booking appointments. And the key thing, guys, that I want to say before I go into anything is that if anybody wants to sell their property or they're thinking of selling, what's the first thing you should do? Who wants to unmute themselves or put it in the chat if you want. What is the first thing you should do if someone says they're thinking about selling their property? Someone put motive, looking for something else. If I said, hey, I'm thinking about selling my property, what should be your objective at that point? Ask them why they want to sell, book the appointment. There we go. Those two things, right? Understand why they want to sell and book an appointment. You're not going to be able to convince someone to sell over the phone um, at a casual conversation at an open house, but it's always push for the appointment, whether it's an in-person appointment, whether it's an over the phone appointment, a Zoom consultation, always ideally getting it in front of them is, is key. But you always want to understand why someone wants to sell because selling is a big, big process. It's not a matter of like, someone doesn't just wake up and say, hey, I think I'm going to sell my house today, right? That's not the way it works. When someone decides to sell, it's because they've been thinking about it. There's a big reason. There's some sort of motivation. Um, there's something else happening on the other end that is pushing them to want to go sell because selling is requires a bunch of steps, right? Getting your house ready, getting it on the market, you know, whether you're getting it fixed, anything like that, dealing with buyers, open houses, there's so many steps involved when someone's selling their home. So in order for someone to really sell, they need to be motivated. And there has to be a big enough reason to sell someone's home, right? So real quick, real quickly in the chat, what are big enough reasons for someone to sell their home? Type them in the chat. So I'm seeing relocating, divorce, already purchased a home, they're moving soon, upgrading their home, downgrading or upgrading, correct. Need the funds to upgrade. Anything else? There's another big one. Twice people sell a lot of times that I don't see on this list. Investments, yeah, could be. A big one, starts with a D. Death, there you go, Teddy. People die, right? So it's usually based around big life events, right? Someone dies and then now they need to sell the house, right? Maybe because there's no one else that's gonna take over the house or maybe it's a husband and wife, maybe they're getting older, someone passes away. Now the wife can't you know, afford the home on her own or she doesn't wanna be there on her own or parents die, kids inherit the property. Now they gotta sell it, right? So death um, is a big one. Divorce, right, is another big life event. People are splitting, but divorce is not always just um, husband and wife, right? It could be like two people who bought a house together and now they're deciding to go separate ways. Maybe it's two brothers who bought a house together, two family members. They, they put their money together, bought a house, and now they're separating because one of them wants to go get their own house or one of them wants to start their own family. And now they got to either sell or buy the other person out. Um, job relocations, those are big ones, right? You got a job in another state, you have a house here. 
you don't want to keep this house as a rental, or maybe you need the money from this house to buy your next house. So you're selling. So it has to be around some sort of big life event, And that's the key thing, right? Is if someone's going to go through all the hassle of selling their home, there needs to be a big life event that has happened. And this is where I see a lot of agents get mixed up is there are some sellers out there, some people thinking of selling that are more just looking for an opportunity, right? The market's hot. I should sell and see if I can make some money. Nine times out of 10, that doesn't work out, right? So if someone is just selling because they think it's the right time to sell because of the market, remember, they got to go somewhere else, right? So if they were to sell, they got to go somewhere else. Unless they're like an investor where they constantly buy and sell homes, that's a different story. But if they're just the average person living in a home and they say, well, I think it's a good time to sell, you need to make sure that you say, wait, hold up. What's going to happen after? right? Where are you going to go? What's the plan? Right? So what I want to drive home with you guys is you should be looking for someone's motivation and make sure it's a big enough reason. Make sure it's one of the, the ones that we just talked about in detail. And you're going to want to ask questions about that. And we'll go through a questionnaire right now of what, of what you should be asking. Are there any questions so far? Does everyone understand the life event, right? Life event. So if someone says, I, hey, I want to sell, hey, awesome, you know, you decided to sell. Let me ask you, what's happening in your life right now that is making you want to take this next step forward of considering selling your home? And then you get them to talk, and then you're going to peel the onion back, right? So what I'm going to pull up right now is what's called the SQS. This is just a little questionnaire. It's a basic script. It's almost like the LP Mama, but it's for sellers. And if you go into... Google Drive. I'll also post this in Slack. But this is the basic script that you're going to follow. Um, and it's more of just like an outline, right? You, you want to, you know, ask these questions in a conversational manner. But this is a universal script that you will ask a seller when they are thinking of selling. Motivation and timing. What is the plan? And then you want to know more about their property, condition of the property, the mortgage, the value of the home, who the decision makers are. And then you go for the appointment and you always want to ask if they're interviewing other agents, because that gives us, you know, some time to prep and see what we're competing against. And then closing question, which we'll go through in a second. So that's the basic bullet points that you're going to ask, just like an LP mama. Um, now, let's go through each one of these guys. So if someone says, hey, I'm, I want to sell or I'm thinking of selling my home, motivation and timing is what you should be thinking of, right? That's the life event. What's the life event that is causing you to sell your home? And I, I phrased it here in a question underneath each bullet point. You know, why are you deciding to sell your home now? And also, how soon do you hope to have your home sold? Now, this is a big one to pay attention to. Because saying, I want to sell my house in June, well, that, does that mean, do you want to start the process in June? Or do you want to have your home sold and the money in the bank by June? Right? That's a big, big, important question to consider because it takes several months to get a home sold because you got to get it ready for the market. You got to prep it. You got to do marketing. You got to get it on the market. You got to accept an offer. And then it's going to take at least 30, 45 days to close escrow. So that time frame, if everything goes according to plan, can probably take, you know, three months or so, give or take. So if someone says, I want to sell my home in June, right? I want my home to be sold in June. I want to have the money in the bank. When should they start the process? Someone put that in the chat. If they want the money in the bank in June, because that's when they, you know, the life event is happening, or that's when they have to move by, or that's when the new job starts, or whatever it might be. Then when should they start the process? Now, right? ASAP. They're a little behind already, right? Because we're in April. So you have the month of April, you have the month of May. And then in June, if it's the end of June, yeah, it's it's possible, right? If we go out to the property and there's not a lot that has to be done and we can put it on the market quickly. You know, we should be able to get offers in a, you know, a week or two. 
um, get us and then close escrow in time for June. So as you start talking to people, you got to start thinking of timeline and ask the question, do you want to start the process in that month or do you want your home to be sold and have the money in the bank by that date, right? Um, are there any questions on motivation and timing? Feel free to chime in guys at any point with any questions. Put it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask a question. Okay, the next thing guys is what is the plan, right? What will happen after you sell? Are you wanting to buy another home? Where would you like to go? So this is where you're digging deeper, right? Okay, great, you wanna sell your home. You want it sold by June, which means you would have to start the process ASAP. But what's gonna happen after you sell? You know, where are you gonna go? Are you buying another home? Uh, is there a certain place you're moving to? Have you already figured out what the plan is and where you're trying to go? Because we need to know the whole entire plan so that we can make our recommendations and be able to point you in the right direction, right? If it's like, oh, I'll just sell and then I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Nope, that's setting yourself up for disaster, right? We don't, because like I said, selling is such a big process. We wanna make sure that we have all our ducks in a row. We're already thinking two steps ahead. We're already identifying you know, the next property or the areas and working on that stuff, running the numbers, doing all those things just like a buyer, right? If they're going to sell and then they're going to buy another property, the buyer has to get pre-approved. We have to do a buyer consultation. We have to understand their whole entire plan, see what they qualify for, what areas, what the market's like in those areas, right? It's the same exact thing, except now you have two transactions in this case. You have the selling process, which we got to go through, and then the buying process. So you got to strategize on what the exact plan is going to be to make it go smoothly. Any questions, guys? Any questions on plan? Does that make sense? Okay. The next question, guys, condition of the property. Why do you think we want to know about the condition of the property? Who can guess why we want to know? Unmute yourself or type it in the chat. Why would we want to know about the condition of the property? Teddy wrote to see how much work we need to put in. Uh, Teddy, unmute yourself real quick, bro. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about that. What do you mean by that? Um, to see if we need to have like a paint job or like put our contractors in so that we could raise the, the value. Absolutely. Right. So knowing the condition of the property allows us to figure out what the plan should be depending on what the seller is looking for if the seller says they want top top dollar well then the property needs to look the best right we want to make sure that the property is really presentable you know whether it's um, fixed up staged marketed well any repairs that we need to do any upgrades that we need to do so knowing the starting point is key Right. So I'm, when I'm on the phone, you know, trying to book an appointment with the seller and I'm like, hey, tell me a little bit about your home. Have you guys done any, done any upgrades? Are there anything? Is there anything that needs to be fixed before selling your property? Right. And then the seller is going to tell you, yeah, we did this. We did that. Or this is not working. Keep in mind, guys, sellers always say their property is a lot nicer than it really is. Right. And the reason why is because what is nice to them is not necessarily what is trending or what is nice to the masses. For example, if you go to my grandma's house, my grandma's favorite color is peach, right? So she has peach decorations, peach wallpaper, red carpet. And to her, her house is beautiful, right? Like that's her style. She's older, old school. She's peach is her, is her thing. But to the masses, right, when we're trying to market the home, we want to make it appeal to everyone who walks in the door. So peach and red carpet and peach wallpaper may not be what's cracking, right? Like that's not what's, what's in right now. You know, we want to go with a more neutral color palette or we want to understand, you know, what colors are in, what, what decor is in so that we can 
get the property ready so that when people walk in, no one's worried about the red carpet or the peach walls. They're more seeing like a neutral palette, a neutral setup that they can imagine themselves living in, right? So this is why you always need to understand, you know, what condition the property is in uh, so that we can make recommendations going forward. All right, guys, uh, next thing is mortgage, right? So we want to know how much is on the mortgage because we want to see how much equity they have in the property, right? So how much do you still owe on the property? Do you need the proceeds to buy a new home? So do you need the money from the house to buy your next home if they're buying another home? Now, why is this important? Because let's say someone's home is worth a million dollars, but they owe 900,000 on their property, right? They only have about 100,000 in equity. There's gonna be costs when they sell their home, commissions, things of that sort. They may, who knows if they owe taxes, if they have any other debt, they, they may not be able to walk away with a lot of money after the home is sold. So knowing how much they owe on the property tells us like how strong of a, of a seller or what sort of position that they're in so that we can help them the best, right? So you want to have a ballpark idea. You don't need to know exactly how much they owe, but round it, you know, to the nearest, you know, 50,000 or 100,000, right? So if they're like, hey, how much do you owe? I owe around 500,000. Great. Okay. That gives us a rough idea, right? Plus or minus. Um, and then what we're doing, right, is when we're taking all this information, it's just like when we're booking the LP, when we're doing the LP mama is we're trying to assess, okay, is this someone that, you know, is motivated, they're realistic? It makes sense. They have a big enough reason. They have good equity in the property. Are they a qualified seller? All right. Okay, next thing. Uh, the value of the home. How much do you think your home is worth? And have you checked Zillow or Redfin? Why do you think we asked this question? Why is this question important? Why is it important to ask them how much they think the home is worth? So Tatiana said, uh, to see if they're realistic, right? If they're realistic to the current market. Absolutely, right? So we wanna know, we wanna know what their expectations are. We see properties every day, right? We're showing homes, we're making offers. So we know more or less a certain neighborhood is around this price. You know, we know in maybe South San Jose, a single family home could go from a million to maybe 1.5 million, right? For your average home. But if they're like, yeah, my home's worth 2 million and you know homes in that neighborhood aren't really going for 2 million or they think it's worth 2 million or they want 2 million, um, you're trying to gauge, okay, is this person realistic, right? Are they just head in the clouds or are they, they've done their homework, they've checked Zillow, they checked Redfin, they know, they know more or less the ballpark of what it's worth. Because you cannot sell a home for someone who is not realistic. If someone wants way more than what the homes are selling for, that home is not going to sell. And you see, a, you see a lot of agents make that mistake where they'll take on, they're afraid to tell the seller, hey, your home's not worth what you think it's worth. Or they're afraid to show the seller. They take on a listing that's overpriced. They waste all this time, energy, and effort, and it doesn't work and it doesn't sell. Right. So that's why making sure the seller is realistic is important. And then sometimes the sellers don't know. There may be some sellers that say, well, I have no clue. You know, I'm old school. I don't really go on the Internet too much. I haven't really checked. But I can tell you 99 percent of the people out there, they know more or less what the homes are selling for. They probably get postcards in the mail. They probably checked Redfin or Zillow. They probably saw the home down the street that sold recently. So. It's important to at least see if, if they're in the ballpark. Okay, um, any questions so far, guys? All right, next one, guys, is uh, decision makers. Is there anyone else on title with you or any other decision makers? How do, you, how do they feel about selling? Why is this important, guys? Why is it important to know who the decision makers are? or if there's anyone else on title or any other decision maker.
Alexis wrote, they need to be involved. Teddy wrote, make sure they're on the same page. Absolutely, right? It can halt the process overall, yep. If there's multiple people, let's say you're, you're, you're calling, right? And you're prospecting and you talk to someone and they wanna sell, but there's also someone else on the property on title and they don't wanna sell. So you book this appointment, you go out there, you talk to this one person, they're all pumped, but then the other person that has a decision, right? Who's, who has an equal um, rights to the property, they need to be on the same page. If you have a husband who wants to sell and a wife who doesn't wanna sell, and they're both on title and they both make the decisions, well, guess what? We're not selling, right? Both people need to be on the same page. If you have two brothers who own a property together because they invested together and one wants to sell and one doesn't, we're not selling. Or one of them is realistic on the price and the other one is way unrealistic, we're gonna have a really hard time selling that property. And if you go out to an appointment and you only meet with the wife, but you don't meet with the husband, what's the wife gonna say at the end of the appointment? When you say, hey, you wanna move forward? You wanna sign, you know, get things going? What is the wife gonna say if the husband's not there? If you book an appointment, you show up to the listing appointment, you talk to the wife, the husband's not there, you go through the process with the wife, Yep, I have to talk to my husband about it, right? So this is why anytime you're gonna meet with people who are considering selling, you need to meet with all decision makers. And sometimes that can be tricky, right? If they don't live in the same household or whatever it might be, maybe you need to do it in a two-step process. Maybe you need to meet with one part and then you need to meet with the other guys as well to make sure they all hear it from you. Because what can happen is, let's say you do a great job and you hit it off with this one guy, but there's another person that's a decision maker that wasn't there at the appointment. Well, they didn't hit it off with you. And maybe they have their own realtor that they know, right? Some other person that they've hit it off with. You know, And that's going to be really hard to sell that home if they're not on the same page and they both haven't interviewed you and like you and agree with everything you have to say. That's going to put things at a halt. So it's always better to, when you book the appointment, hey, is there anybody else making the, the decisions? How do they feel about selling? Oh yeah, my brother, yeah, he's on the property as well. Yeah, he, he wants to sell as well. He's, he's in agreement. Great, will your brother be available to meet us and be there at the appointment? Because we wanna make sure, you know, we explain everything and answer all questions. The tricky part, guys, I've had this happen, is like, oh yeah, you can meet with me and then I'll let my brother know everything. Nine times out of 10, it doesn't work, guys, because they're not going to, you know, use the sales skills, sell it like you do. They're basically going to just sum, sum everything up and then pass the information on. And that may not convince the other person. And then you're not going to get that sale. Right. So that's why having all parties in front of you, if there's multiple people on the property, is extremely important, guys. Any questions so far? Okay, great. Uh, let's see here. Okay, the last thing, guys, uh, booking the appointment. So when I ask all these questions, everything checks out. Let's say I'm on the phone, I'm calling leads or whatever it might be. What I always do is you go for the appointment, right? And I wrote, I wrote on here kind of like a closing little statement. Hey, based on all the information, I'd like to set a time to come to your home and go over all your options with all decision makers, we can show you the best strategy for selling at the highest price possible. And we can give you a realistic evaluation once we see your home in person, right? Don't fall for like, well, just tell me what you think my home could sell for over the phone. Hey, I'd love to tell you what it could sell for, but I basically would just be doing the same thing that Zillow and Redfin does, which is an estimate. For me to actually tell you what your home could sell for and even show you how to make more money on the property, I need to come out and I need to see the property. And then you go in for the close. I have tomorrow at 2 p.m. or 4 p.m., which is available for you, which, is, which works for you, this morning or afternoon, right? Whatever you guys use for the close. 
So you always want to book the appointment, right? You get a little bit of information, which helps you build rapport. And then you book the appointment. And then you decide at that point, okay, is it worth it for me to go out there? Now, these are two final things that we add in here. A lot of agents are scared to ask these questions. Um, but if you want to increase your conversion rate and you want to make sure that you're not wasting a bunch of time meeting with people who are unrealistic or meeting with people who you don't have a good chance of even closing the sale with is you ask these two questions. Number one, are they interviewing other, any other agents? Hey, do you have any other agents you're speaking to or you plan to speak with or uh, anything like that? And sometimes people will be like, yeah, I'm, I have another realtor that I'm talking to. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, interview them as well. I've had um, deals where they told me they were interviewing five agents, five different agents, right? And I was going to be one of them. And there was four other agents they were going to interview. So when I go into that, I already know that it's going to be competitive. I already know that we're probably going to have to negotiate on the commission, right? I already know that um, I really need to hit it off with the seller, right? And I've lost um, deals where they didn't go with me because they just didn't feel a connection with me. And that's the part that is difficult because some people just vibe with different people, right? Personalities, maybe they have things in common. Um, I've, had, I've had listing appointments where I went out there and, and it was really competitive, four or five agents they're interviewing. And they told me, you know what? Everything you said was awesome. Like I would totally recommend you to other people. But this other person, I just felt more of a connection with them because, you know, my brother recommended them or something like that. It's nothing personal. You're awesome. I would definitely go with you if I didn't have this other person. Right. So those things happen, guys. Sometimes we go out there and we do a great job and we just don't hit it off with the client um, because it's also a personality match. And it's a lot different from buyers where buyers are super motivated and they're looking at you to kind of lead the show with sellers. A lot of times, like everyone is trying to get their listing. So they know they have options. They're interviewing, they're picking apart, you know? So that's, that's some percentage of sellers. You have other percentage of sellers that maybe they're old school and they ain't talking to no one else. You're the only person they're talking to. I've had that as well, where I hit it off with them. I stayed in touch with them. I nurtured them. And they're like, yeah, you're the only person we're talking to. We feel comfortable with you. Like when we're ready to sell, you know, we're going to work with you. So it's just different types of sellers. Some are more savvy. Some do their homework. Some interview multiple agents. Some go online and check your reviews. And some of them are more just old school. And like if they feel good with you, they end up going with you, which can also get them in trouble, right? Because sometimes they can go with an agent who is not the best for them, but just because they felt right. And then that agent doesn't end up doing a good job. So that's the tricky part. But if it were me, guys, and I'm going to go out to an appointment, I would always want to know who my competition is. Because then I can already start preparing. And I can, if I already know like that certain agent works a certain way, I can already use some of those things in my presentation. And I've won many listings, guys, where I was competing with three or four or five agents but since I asked the question up front, I knew who the agents were and I was able to do my homework and I was able to bring information with me on the appointment um, and kind of put some doubt into the seller. Like, hey, this is why you don't want to work with this guy. This is why you don't want to work with this guy. This is the advantage I have and and won it. But it took a lot, a lot more work, guys. Um, any questions so far? Any questions on the interviewing agent part? Those of you guys listening real quick, what stands out to you so far, right? Because a lot of you guys have gotten training from buy, you know, on the buyer side of business. What stands out to you as we're going through this? Is working with sellers easier, harder, different? What stands out to you? I'm going to call on someone. Chris, I'm calling on you, Chris. What stands out to you, brother? Uh, it's just really like a different process. Um, it's very different from the buyers. 
uh, it's just a whole different process. You know, it's, it's a whole different script. Um, there's a whole nother presentation that we have to learn. And um, yeah, there's, there's a whole different process that, you know, that we have to learn as agents. Got it. Do you feel this is easier, harder? What do you think? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell. Uh, I think it just really depends on the on the client as well. You know, we'll have yeah. bad clients, some good clients. Uh, it just really just depends. Got it. Good feedback. Good stuff. Um, Tatiana wrote, meeting at the property in person rather than over Zoom, I feel more personal connection and personality and skills go a long way. Absolutely. Anytime I would book an appointment to talk to a seller, I would always book the appointment to come to their house. So you always want to try to book a listing appointment where you're going to come out to their property because over the phone, there's not much you can do, right? Like it's hard to convey, you know, personality over, over the phone or even through Zoom, right? Because you have this camera in front of you. Um, you always want to try to, if, if you can, get in front of that person. Because then you can, you know, laugh with them, joke with them, build rapport, walk around their house, point some nice things out, do all those things that essentially is uh, the majority of the work, right? Because when someone interviews, you know, four or five good agents, a lot of the agents have the same services, right? So services are like staging, photography, inspections, you know, website, marketing, photos. 99% of the agents out there who are, you know, actively selling homes have the same services, right? So, but what they don't have is they don't have you, right? Your personality, your work ethic, you know, your rapport, your things in common. That's the differentiator most of the time, right? If you have three or four, you know, good agents, agents who produce, agents who have sold homes, right? That's the difference. That's the X factor, so to say. So when you meet someone in person, that's your time to shine, to build rapport with them. And if you build really good rapport with them and you make them feel comfortable, then the services is just like a small fraction of, of, of the whole pie, right? Like of, of what they're looking at. So I like that you brought that up, Tatiana, because yes, you do need to get in front of them. Um, closing question, guys, this last part right here. A lot of people are going to feel uncomfortable with this, but this is more like you're just trying to gauge the client, right? If when we meet, you like everything we say and we agree upon pricing, the marketing plan, are you guys ready to get the process started, right? And this is something you got to role play. If when we meet, you like everything we say, we agree upon pricing and marketing, are you ready to get the process started? And you want to just say it nice and like nonchalantly. You don't want to make it like a big deal. You want to just say it really casually. And um, you're trying to gauge like if these people are really serious about selling their home or if they're just kind of, you know, looking or whatever it might be. And there's no right or wrong answer here, guys. You're just looking to see where they stand. If they're like, yep, no, we're like, yeah, we're ready to go. We decided we want to sell. We just need to pick the right agent. Then you know you're going to come in there and you're going to bring your A game and you're going to try to push to close that deal right? You're going to try to do whatever it takes to get the signature, get the listing signed, and close the deal on the spot. If the seller says, no, well, we're just kind of thinking about it. You know, we're still far out. You know, we don't, um, we haven't decided where we're going to move to, you know, but we just want to see, you know, more or less where we stand. Well, then, you know, they're just kind of, they're not fully there yet, right? So you should still go out there. You should still hit it off. You should still do everything you're going to do, but you're not necessarily going to push like super hard and aggressively to get them to sign a listing agreement, right? Or if you do, you're going to do it like in a strategic way. You're going to say, hey, I know you guys are about six months out. Hopefully we hit it off. Let's go ahead and get everything signed. And then we're not going to start anything until we get closer to that date. But at least you already locked in the realtor that you feel comfortable with. And we can maybe even start, you know, preparing your home or start, you know, exploring, you know, your next, your move or whatever it might be, right? So it's a little bit different. Um, does that make sense, guys, on why you need to ask these closing questions? So here's the thing. This is just like the LP mama, right? This is the seller version. If all you do is um, memorize this, rehearse it, practice it, make this part of your dialogue when you talk to, you know, sellers, 
that's really the majority of the work for you to book the appointment, right? This is the same questions you're going to ask every single seller. It doesn't matter if it's your uncle, your cousin, a referral, a buyer you're working with that's selling their home. It's the same exact process over and over. You're going to ask all the same questions, right? So if you want to work with sellers, you need to memorize this script right here, right? I'll put the link in the chat, uh, actually in Slack. And this is also, if you go into our Google Drive and just type in SQS, you'll see a copy that you could print out there. But I would have this with me, print it out, memorized, um, and just make it natural, make it your own. Um, any questions so far, guys, on the seller SQS? Okay. So the next part of it, Tatiana had asked, um, do we have selling PDF with all the services? That's what we're going to go over next, guys. Um, for the we got about 15 minutes left and we'll wrap up. Um, so the next part we're going over is gonna be our selling page on our website. So we have designed this page on our website to act as like your marketing guide, right? This is all the stuff that we do and it's a basically informational page. We use this as like your listing presentation. You don't have to print one out. I know someone like Rob, he prints one out. That's fine. You can have your, you know, he adds that to this, but really this website is basically a listing presentation page. And that's what it does, right? So if, if anybody ever says, well, send me some information about you guys, boom, you could just send them this link. If anybody, if you meet with someone and you're doing a consultation in person, I would pull my laptop up and I would go through this page with them that basically sells our services, right? If you wanna email someone, like I said, you could send it to them. You could text them the link, whatever it might be. So all it is is you just go to our website, realestateprg.com and you click on selling. And this is the page right here. And I'm gonna go through this really quick. And I encourage all you guys to spend some time memorizing this page because it's gonna give you that foundation you need. Um, so the top part is basically, this is a little home bot thing. If someone wants to find out what their home is worth, they could punch in their address here. And when they do, it'll register them and then we'll get that lead that comes in saying so-and-so um, was looking to find their home value. Now, this top section, guys, just basically outlines different services that we can offer, different ways to sell your home. So selling your home in a changing market, um, there's different approaches, right? Some people want to sell fast and easy. Some people want to, um, are just looking for like the lowest commission. Some people want to actually go through the process, fix up their home, get it ready, market it the fullest and sell for top dollar, which is a full service process. And we can do either way guys. So we have a full service sale, which is basically that. And if you read here for those clients who have all the traditional selling needs, this option includes home inspection, staging, design, upgrades, full vendor coordination, and all of the high-end marketing PRG is known for. There's a discount fee sale. So let's, someone, let's say someone doesn't need a lot of prep to their home. Maybe it's a higher priced home, or maybe it's a home that's just ready to go on the market. And there's not, all we need to do is just do some of the marketing stuff. We don't necessarily need to prep it. Um, for those clients who want to sell as is, don't need any repairs or upgrades, and want to sell at lower cost, includes all the marketing. PRG is known for, and all the necessary documents and negotiations to net the most money. This would be like a discount fee. So yeah, can we discount the fee a bit if someone doesn't need all the stuff that this first person needs? Yeah, we can definitely work with them. Um, if it's an easier sale and there's less things we gotta pay for and do. And then you have a cash offer, right? For those clients who wanna fast close, maybe a free rent back, negotiable terms. And this is best for homes that are distressed, in need of substantial repairs, or have unforeseen circumstances that require a quick sale, right? So let's say um, it's a fixer upper, the house is like destroyed. They don't wanna deal with anything. They just say, hey, just take it off my hands. You know, we don't mind selling it for less as long as you can like just get this closed in a week, right? There's those options. We have investors. We buy houses for cash. Um, the key thing, though, here, guys, is that when you meet with someone, you have three different options because every single seller is going to fit in one of these categories, right? They're either going to want all the full services or they're going to need all the full services to get the price they want. 
or they may be looking for a little bit of a discount on the fee, or maybe they're a fixer upper, right? Majority of people though are gonna fit into either full service or this discount right here. The first two options, that's where majority of people will fit in. Once in a while, you'll get people who just wanna let their house go for cash if they really, really need the cash. Are there any questions guys on these three types of ways to sell your home? Who can guess why I put all three in here? Why do you think we put all three on here? Who wants to guess why we have all three options on this, on this um, page here? Why would we put discount fee? Why would we put cash offer? Why would we have all these three options? Yeah, Teddy wrote, every client's need is different. Correct, that's part of it, but it's also a marketing thing. So I want you guys to think from this standpoint, right? People, do they like only having one option or do they like having multiple options, right? It's a psychological thing. When you go meet with someone, uh, if you ever go like buy a car, or you ever go do a big purchase or anything like that, there's always different options that you can get depending on, on that particular product, right? There are people that, shop at Nordstrom's and are willing to pay top dollar, right? And see the value in paying more for service and stuff like that. There are people who are just looking for the cheapest price, right? There are people who don't want to hassle and deal with things. So from a marketing standpoint, when you're the realtor that says, hey, I have different options for you, it makes you more valuable than that other realtor who only has one option, right? This is the only way I do it. I don't budge. I don't um, I don't give any discounts. I don't do anything like that. Well, then you're going to lose some people, right? So for us, we want to understand each person's situation, see if we can put them in one of these options and then see if it makes sense for them and it makes sense for us as well, right? And that's basically the, the thought process behind it. Um, meet our listing specialists. So I just, I put myself, Blanca and Rob on here um, that have sold, you know, the most listings. Um, when I was heavy in production, guys, I was doing mainly listings at, towards the end when I kind of stopped selling a lot of homes. Um, but I've sold hundreds and hundreds of properties, guys, where I've represented sellers and sold properties for top dollar and stuff like that. And I've trained Rob, I've trained Blanca, I've trained several other people on our team how to do the same. Um, but we list, we list some of the top listing agents here on our team. Um, get connected guys. This is basically a link for them to book a, a call. So if someone wants to come on here, I use this page for advertising. They can click on this. It'll take them to a calendar page and they can book a call or an appointment. Now services guys. So this right here is the page that's going to go through the services. So like what, um, Tatiana had asked for, is there a PDF that shows the different services we have? This is basically, in a nutshell, the three different stages of selling a home, right? And we can do all these things for a full service, you know, listing. We're going to do all these three things here. If it's a discount or a cash offer, then that's where we're going to remove some of the services. But home preparation, right? This is where we go out there. We'll walk in with our contractor. We'll give them, um, you know, recommendations on repairs, on upgrades. We'll say, hey, we think you should paint the house. We think, you know, if you do this, you're going to get more money. We'll do that whole, whole assessment with them. We'll walk it and we'll let them know these are the things that we think you should do. That's going to get you the most money for the property. Um, we will help them do all the finishes as well, right? We have contractors that we work with. Um, they don't have to use our contractor, but there's an advantage to them using our contractors because they can pay at the close of escrow. So let's say they need $20,000 worth of work done on their property. They need paint, they need carpet, they need all these things. And it makes sense for them to do that because the house will sell for more. Well, if you use our contractors, our contractors can do the work for you and you don't have to pay any of that money up front. You pay when the house sells. So we'll do repair completion and project management. We're also going to do a property and termite inspection. And if there's any other inspections we need to do on a case by case basis, so we'll do those as well. Um, and then we'll have the stagers come out and they'll basically do an interior design 
and property staging. Sometimes, you know, we have clients where we can work with their furniture. Maybe we do a partial staging. Let's say they're living in the property. They have some nice things and maybe we're going to add some things to it or maybe subtract some things from what they have. Or if it's a vacant property, then we might just come in there and stage the whole entire property. And then right here, repairs, uh, repair costs close, uh, repair costs paid at the close of escrow is what I had described, right? If they use our contractors, they're not putting any money up front um, and they can pay when the house sells. So this essentially is getting your home prepared for the market. Any questions guys on this first part? Okay, we're almost wrapping up guys. Um, next step guys, once we get the home prepared is all the marketing stuff that we're gonna do. So professional photography and video, right? We get our, we use Soul Gold, we use Aerial Canvas. There's a few vendors that we use depending on the property. We'll go out there, we'll get photos taken. There's on certain properties, we'll do video. Um, a lot of you guys are going out there and doing your own videos and reels for Instagram and stuff like that. Um, so that's what we're going to do to showcase the property and promote it. All our online marketing campaigns and social media campaigns, right? So we're email blasting this to uh, other agents. We're putting it on the MLS where other agents are going to see it. It's going to go on all the big websites, Zillow, Redfin, all the major sites that people search for. And then we're all, um, when we have a just listed, right? You guys see those flyers. We're all promoting it on our Instagram to thousands and thousands of followers um, that we all have collectively. So this is how we're going to help them market their property. We build a website for each property as well. So anytime they sell a property with us, there's a, a website. It'll be like 123mainstreet.com. And the website is going to have all the information for that property. All the photos, the descriptions, the map. It's their own personal website for that property. Uh, brochures, right? We're doing, we do door knocking flyers. Um, we'll do flyers for, for properties and for the open houses, things of that sort. But we're going to have all that stuff ready for people um, to market their home. And then we're doing mega open houses, broker tours, wine and cheeses. You guys have participated at some of the things, right, where we're doing open houses. For certain properties, we'll do a wine and cheese on a Thursday or a Friday. Um, but these are all the different things that we're going to do to market their property. So when someone wants to know, well, hey, what do you guys do to market my home? Bam. We do all of these things and we can do more depending on the property. If it's like a really expensive property, we might step it up and do some more if it's appropriate. Let me know if there's any questions, guys, on the marketing stuff. Tatiana, is this helpful? There you go. You got to learn this. Um, Pricing and negotiation, right? So we got the home prepared. We got it marketed, right? We did all the marketing stuff to get it ready to hit the market. Now, this is the really important part is the pricing and negotiation. So we're going to do a strategic pricing strategy. So this is where we sit down with the client. We go through the comps. We go through what homes are listed for, what the market's like. And we're going to determine what's the best price to put your home on the market so that it gets the most offers, the most people coming in the door, the most eyes on the property. It's not just making up a price out of thin air and just throwing it. We're going to do homework and we're going to come up with a pricing strategy based off what we see is working in the market. Once we get offers to come in, we do an offer review and negotiation. So this is where we look through all the offers. Um, we negotiate. We see who has the best terms. We go back. We counter offer people. We do all these different things to try to drive the price up. And there's that back and forth negotiation. Um, to get the best price and best terms for the seller. We do a multi-step buyer and agent vetting. So this is where we're going to make sure we double check all the buyer stuff, make sure they're pre-approved, look at their bank statements, make sure the buyer's qualified before we move forward with their offer. We'll call the, we'll call the uh, lender to double check things with the lender. And then the agent as well, whoever's representing them as the buyer agent, we're going to do some homework on them. Are they someone who consistently sells homes, right? We want to make sure that it's not just a strong buyer, but they have a strong agent as well because the agent in the transaction can make a difference also in how smooth the process goes and all that stuff as well. We have our transaction coordinator, 
uh, Melissa, who handles all the legal compliance, looks over all the documents, makes sure everything's following the timelines, all the laws and all that stuff with the DRE uh, and make sure the process moves along. And then we have our own uh, title and escrow company that we work with, our preferred uh, people we work with that give us you know, premium service. They give us uh, faster service and stuff like that. We work with Chicago Title. They've been working with us for over 10 years um, and they help us close the deals as smooth as possible. So in a nutshell, guys, these three stages are the three steps that we do um, when we're taking on a listing, right? And then some of those will vary a little bit depending if it's a full service, if we're doing uh, less stuff. Uh, Tatiana asks, can I be the agent for both the selling and buying side of the transaction? Yeah, you definitely can be. However, um, all that stuff just has to be disclosed. You know, we double-ended deals. I would say it's not so common just because a lot of times we'll get a buyer that, like say if we have a listing, we'll get a buyer that calls us and says, hey, I want to work with you guys to write the offer. So we can represent them, but they're not always the highest offer, right? So if we have 10 offers on the property and the buyer that we have is not willing to be the highest offer, then we're not going to just go with their offer, you know, and jeopardize the client, you know, the seller getting the most for their property. So yes, we can do it. We can uh, double end a deal, but it doesn't always work out that way just because the nature of the markets, it's usually very, very competitive. All right. So it's a case by case type of deal. But yeah, but if we have the buyer and they're willing to pay the most and they're motivated, right? And we get them in, then yeah, we've, we've done that. We've done that many times. Okay, and the last part, guys, of this website is just going to be samples of all of our marketing, right? So when you want to send someone like a sample of what we do, like here's a, a video. All right, so there's a sample, guys, right? That's a video that Blanca did for one of her properties. Um, here's a video for a property that I sold a while back. So just to give you an idea, guys, so all this whole next section on the bottom is just all samples of our marketing, right? So property tours. Um, this is a good one right here. This is a this is one that I recorded for a property I sold years ago where it showed all the steps from when we took the listing on, when we got the house fixed up. All right, y'all. So there you go. That video is like, it, it walks them through the whole entire process from taking on the listing, preparing it, marketing it, 
um, all the way to receiving multiple offers and then selling the property. So it's a good video for even those of you guys just to watch it. So you guys can actually see the process and how it goes, right? If you've never sold a home, this is me walking you through the process. And it's really good also to send to clients. Uh, so there's some samples of videos um, from properties, right? These are all property. This is all mar uh, photography. These are actually properties that we've sold. So I like to show people like, hey, um, not all photography is created equal. Let me see if this freaking loads. Um, but these are actual homes we sold. Like, so you can see how bright and crisp all the photos are. And I like to really show this because you'll see some agents, guys, where they just, they don't use um, high-end photography. They don't pay the extra money to get nice photos that are edited, stuff like that. Um, but we like to really make them pop. And then these are samples of like uh, property websites. So if you click on this, hopefully it should work still. There we go. Bam. So this is an actual website for a property that we sold. So you can show them, hey, when you sell your home with me, we'll create this cool website. It's going to have all the information about the property, all your photos. Virtual tour. I think this one's sums up with this link, but there'll be a link to a virtual tour there. Uh, this one was uh, Rob and Maudi actually sold this property. Go back here and you can see like 3D tours. If you click on this, it'll be a sample of a 3D tour, some samples of our flyers and then some social media stuff showing them like the just listed, you know, wine and cheese coming soon. Just showing them how we promote properties on social media basically. So this whole entire page guys, if you look at it, this is really a whole entire like listing presentation, right? So it starts off with asking the right questions on the phone right? Going through that whole dialogue, booking the appointment, going out there, meeting the, you know, the seller, building that rapport with them, right? Making sure you build that relationship and then showing them all the things that we're going to do and then finding which program is going to be the best for them. Are they going to be best suited for the full service where we do all the things that, you know, are going to help them get top dollar? Maybe we don't need to do that, right? Maybe we only need to do photography. Maybe the house is brand new and it's, it's, it's already nice, right? Or maybe it's a, a property that, you know, they just want to get it off their hands and they're willing to take less for the property and sell it as cash. Um, but essentially, you're going to use that website and, you know, all the stuff that we just talked about as your whole guide to, to getting sellers uh, to move forward. Uh, let's close it up, guys. Any questions? Really quick in the chat, guys, before we wrap up, what stood out to you most today? Now that you guys have seen this, I know some of you guys are new to this part of the business. Uh, what stood out to you? Or what's a takeaway? A takeaway that you have, something that stood out to you. Light bulb that went off. Tatiana wrote, all that we provide for sellers. I didn't know we made websites for every listing. There you go. Love the websites and professional videos. There's always a reason why people sell. Always check on their motivation. Find the reason why the client needs to sell. The more value you bring, the more you charge. That's right. If you're bringing more stuff to the transaction, well, then you can ask for, you know, a higher fee. Um, and also, you know, making sure you're giving them the results. The approach on the listing side, evaluate your sellers as much as possible. Yep. Good stuff, guys. So um, I hope this um, cleared up some stuff, at least help you, know, you guys open your eyes to what's possible. The key thing is for you to get good at this, the same way that you guys practice your, your buyer scripts, um, buyer presentations, is you need to practice this stuff, right? The reason that I can just do a training like this and host it and explain everything is because I've gone through that website hundreds and hundreds of times, right? Like I've personally put it together 
I've researched it. I've looked at it. I've done it in front of clients hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, and I've, I've done my homework basically, right? And I practiced it. I failed it in the beginning. It wasn't like that, right? Um, but years and years later and hundreds and hundreds of times later, now I can do that with confidence. So go out there, guys, study this material. If you have a seller, remember, book the appointment and find out why they are selling. Build that rapport, but always say, hey, let's book a time to meet and go through the process and go through your options um, and see if it makes sense. That's the key, key thing, guys, right? You're not going to close anybody over the phone. You need to really meet with them and put a plan together. That's all I got, guys. Let me know if you have any questions going forward. Um, we'll see you uh, tomorrow at the meeting.